Hi, I'm Juliana. Um, I'm currently involved in a lot of our work around RNA vaccines and therapeutics. I'm actually head of our center of excellence in lipid nanoparticles. RNA is present in all of our bodies. It's a set of instructions that the body uses to make proteins. And proteins provide all sorts of functions for the body. They're essentially the building blocks of life. So they make up the proteins in your arm or in your heart, but also things like enzymes that help you break down food are also a different type of protein. So for COVID-19, we used basically RNA technology, but synthesized it in a lab and then injected it into the body. So what it's essentially doing is harnessing your own body's machinery to produce a protein of interest. So for COVID-19, that was the spike protein, which is something that's on the surface of the coronavirus. So basically when your body sees that, it's able to train its immune response. So it's ready when an actual real coronavirus enters your body, it's ready to fight it. RNA technology could also be used and has potential for kind of other therapeutic uses for things like genetic diseases and also for cancer. In the future, there's potential to create new cancer therapeutics that are lower cost to produce and create fewer side effects when they're given to patients. In this case, you can look at specific markers or molecules or proteins that are present in cancer cells, but not present in healthy cells. And then you can inject basically an RNA sequence that will teach your body to recognize those proteins on the surface of cancer cells. And then your body is able to mount an immune defense against the tumor or the cancer cells. CPI are continuing to work with the Vaccines Task Force to ensure that we are developing a UK capability for RNA vaccine manufacture. But alongside that, we're seeing a huge explosion of academics and companies who are also developing RNA vaccines and therapeutics. So we work with them in a variety of ways on projects one-to-one -one and also on kind of larger collaborative pieces of work so that we come together as an industry to solve common challenges. So here we are at one of our RNA process development labs. Hi Philip. Hi Jules. So this is the Amber 250 where we do some of the process development for RNA manufacture. So what we have here is an Amber 250. This is a high throughput bioreactor system where we can do 24 different experiments simultaneously. We take our DNA template, we take our enzymes, we take our chemicals, we pop the lid off, we put them in, we we run them for a few hours and then after that we've got lots of messenger RNA which we then take forward in the process for further purification and encapsulation. So this system will ultimately support customers and collaborators with their commercialisation of their new RNA vaccines and therapeutic products. So by virtue of there being very, relatively little access to this type of system to those types of people, we can get customers in, we can get their products on the system and use it to accelerate their products through. So identify what works, what doesn't work, and then ideally then scale up beyond this to say um, a, a litre scale system to produce material for clinical studies. So at CPI, we have this RNA infrastructure, both to develop new processes, to advance the technology, and to manufacture doses of vaccine. As RNA is such a new technology, we really need to train the next generation of scientists. Our training academy will do just that. So we are gonna be providing courses from every level, from apprentices up to kind of company leaders. So we really need RNA infrastructure in the UK for a few different reasons. This coronavirus is still with us. It's mutating all the time. We need to be ready to respond to new variants and to produce vaccines for the UK, but also for populations globally. Hello, uh, my name's Professor Robin Shattuck from Imperial College London, um, and I've been working on vaccine development for a number of years, um, and most recently working on RNA-based vaccines. 
So we very much represent the kind of discovery innovation phase of research. It's fairly straightforward to design something in the laboratory and, and, and test it early. But then for companies and for academic groups, raising the capital to, to make the material that's of sufficient quality to move into clinical trials is, is a significant hurdle. No one individual group can necessarily go from that initial design concept all the way into the clinic um, to developing a product. And that's where groups like CPI have a role to play because they take often the kind of processes that are laboratory based and work out how to make them industrialisable. So working in partnership with CPI, we've been looking at developing the technology so that we can make potential vaccines for the world. People will be very familiar of RNA vaccines against COVID-19. So that really proves that the technology was mature and ready to work. And the real excitement about this technology is its speed. Um, and I think next time, having proved itself for COVID-19, we'll be better prepared to move even faster. Um, we're now taking it forward for other indications. We're looking at different ways of, of making RNA and encoding different proteins so that they can be delivered for vaccines, for cancer, for protein replacement. Having designed those on the computer, we're producing them. We expect that in terms of UK designed approaches, cancer therapies based on RNA technology in the clinic, that that could be realised within a couple of years. I personally believe that RNA is bringing in us into a new era within medicine and it has such potential beyond the vaccines that we're suddenly seeing now but also into therapies for cancer and beyond and it's really exciting to be working on it here in Darlington.